Hello, listeners. This is Kat. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Watch Your Heroes Fall. This will be Part 6, Chapter 7, entitled Phase 1, Stage 5, Do Not Startle Your Ducks. Class on Thursday, after the rush to get to their dorms and to get dressed and get into the flow of normalcy after visiting the hideout for the League of Villains on Wednesday night, is incredibly mundane. Even Heroic's class manages to be uneventful since Mr. All Might has prepared a presentation on hero image and fighting styles for them to take notes on. It might be because every day this week, some kid from Class 1A has gone to Recovery Girl halfway through class. Mr. All Might definitely seems nervous, casting glances at Su Yu, Jiro, and Koda, the three who'd been injured this week. Momo's doing her best to keep her head in her notes and her eyes on Mr. All Might's presentation. She can hardly help if her head is stuffed with images of murderous villains making quiet jokes in their pajamas, or if her eyes keep dancing between her classmates. Everyone is injured, to some degree. Little scrapes and bruises. Reddened swelling where Recovery Girl's quirk has been used recently, accumulating scars from all sorts of little things like training and sparring and villain attacks. Even Momo's own hands, as soft as she always is trying to keep them with her expensive moisturizer, are growing calloused and she's got several scars where her hero costume doesn't cover. On her stomach, and her legs, and her arms, and her neck, and even between her breasts. For a moment, she wonders vaguely if she would have those same scars if she wore her school uniform to battle. Her gaze travels to Hagekure, who wears nothing but gloves, and her shoes, and her hero costume, and she wonders where the scars fall on her invisible form. Are Hagekure's scars accumulating daily, unseen but painful? Does Hagekure go home each day bleeding blood that no one can see? She misses Mr. All Might calling her name. Young Yao Yorozu, he says, as if it's the second or third time he said it. She snaps to stand, and he dumbly repeats his question, and she dumbly parrots an answer, and his feathers unruffle when she's luckily correct. Momo feels Izuka's eyes bore into her, and when she meets his gaze, the message is clear. Hold it together. Momo tries, but her gaze can't help but fix on Jiro, twirling a jack around her bandaged fingertip. When Jiro sees her staring, she grins before Momo can look away, and sticks her tongue out just to see Momo smile back. Jiro winks and Momo flushes the both of them, go back to staring straight ahead at the board where Mr. All Might is giving examples of different versions of hero image as compared with fighting styles. Mirko's solo work complements her fast-paced fights, and best genus supportive threads can adapt to insidious plans while working with allies or quick disarmament when alone, and endeavors cold demeanor contrasts with his fiery power. Momo glances to Shoto, and he seems as placid as ever, taking notes dutifully, not so much as pausing when his perfect penmanship traces the characters that spell out his father's hero name. She frowns and tries to follow his example. After class, Mr. All Might calls her to his desk instead of releasing her for the day with her classmates. Yes, sir, she asks, her thoughts gittering over paranoia and her eyes resolutely on the floor to keep them from being too revealing. Mr. All Might sets one hand on her shoulder. You're a good kid, young Yayorozu, he says. It feels like a condemnation, like he knows. And you're a good student, too. Are you doing all right? You seemed off your game in class. His tone and posture is, as ever, reassuring and stalwart, but it feels menacing now. You can tell me if something is wrong, he says confidently. His presence, even in a smaller form, is oppressive. Momo stumbles over herself to hold out her hands placatingly, keeping Mr. All Might at arm's length, and says, No, yes, everything is all right, Mr. All Might, sir. She clears her throat and forces her eyes to meet his, forces the brightness in her eyes to shine like empathy and not fear. She's got practice pretending like this. The Webame had been very clear that female heroes need to be able to do that better than men, since people look to female heroes for comfort more than male heroes. I was distracted today, but I'll do better tomorrow. Mr. All Might smiles at the answer, pats her head encouragingly, and says, That's what I like to hear. Sorry for holding you, young Yagirosu. Go enjoy your time with your friends. Jiro is waiting for her outside the classroom door. What was that about? Jiro asks, gifting Momo a sideways smile, and Momo smiles with her. Mr. All Might was just checking on me. She gives an exaggerated sigh and says, He thinks I'm falling behind on my studies. Following Momo's faux-devastated lead, Jiro puts a sympathetic hand on her shoulder. Well, it's probably time to drop out of UA, then. The charade drops and Jiro giggles. 
I'll come with. We can move to Iceland and be sheep farmers instead. They both laugh, and then a voice with higher, thinner cadence breaks in. Yeah, Yorosu, can we borrow you for a bit? Izuka's face is smiling and peaceful and excited as ever. No trace of last night except the puffy dark circles under his eyes, and even those are slight. For that project, Izuku adds, for Jiro's sake. Sorry, Jiro, Momo murmurs. Can we talk later? Sure, Momo, don't worry about it, Jiro says brightly. Hey there, Midoriya, Todoroki, Shinso. Her eyebrows raise, and she looks at Momo, silently asking what project has you working with these three? But Momo doesn't have an answer that will satisfy her, because she doesn't want to lie to her. She shrugs and smiles, and Jiro shrugs and frowns, and they go their separate ways. I don't think I've ever seen Jiro smile that much, Todoroki says. Nothing in his inflection is different from him saying, You have something on your face, or Why did he assign so much homework, or Have a nice day, but everyone here can read between those lines anyway, and Momo feels her face flush. She smiles all the time. Momo insists, Izuku's smile grows wider, more conspiratorial, but nobody says anything more. They walk to the holly bush, where Izuku had first told them the plan, and the air is exactly as foreboding as the first time. The echoes of Jiro's laugh sink Momo's stomach. When Izuku's plan begins to roll, Momo can't take Jiro or her laugh with her. For however long they work with the League, Momo can't talk with Jiro, or see her smile, or make her hair ties when she forgets them in her room. If the strings on Jiro's guitar or bass or violin get tired, Momo won't be able to pull new ones out of her skin for Jiro to replace them with. And if her drumsticks break, she'll have to just buy new ones. She won't be able to casually lean on Jiro when they watch movies together. And she'll be too far away to meet her eyes during class and lunches. will be separate and without her teasing Momo for the intricacy of her lunchboxes. You okay, Yagorozu? Todoroki asks. Momo scrubs the moisture from her eyes and says, Oh, yes, I'm fine. Just lost in thought, I guess. Shinso rests a hand on her shoulder briefly. I know how you feel, he says. I will say it simply, Izuka says, once they're all nestled into the ring of holly bushes with a chilly wind blowing over their head. Please act more natural. Momo instantly knows Izuka is talking to her. She had slipped up so plainly in class. Her face warms with embarrassment. Izuka sees this, says, I'm mostly talking to Shinso. Shinso balks at the implication, and Izuka hurries to explain himself before Shinso can take offense. I just mean, uh, how do I say this? He scratches the back of his neck, and Todoroki says it for him. We know you don't have close friends in your class, but you can't suddenly act like you never want to speak to them again. Now, knowing Izuka and Todoroki are right, Shinso wilts grumpily. Not like you two were any better, he grumbles. Izuku and Todoroki look at each other, and Izuku says, He's right, Shoto. Stop staring at Katan like you're going to kill him. I always stare at Bakugo like I want to kill him. Okay, then stop looking at him like you might actually do it today. Well, what else am I supposed to do? Pay attention in class. You still have tests to take after this week. That catches Momo's mind. Wait, what? She blurts. Why? Izuku's spine snaps to attention, and he avoids eye contact sheepishly. Shoto's not... He's not coming with us. To the League. Shinso makes a more obvious expression than he's usually capable of, and Momo shares the sentiment visible there. She won't pretend to know everything, not even as much as Izuku about life in the Todoroki household, but if any of them should be going to join the League, it should be Todoroki Shoto. The dorms are a safe place for him, but he's the only person who comes back from visiting home on the weekends more injured than when he left. Frankly, Momo's worried about how okay Todoroki will be facing his father without Izuku to come back to, and facing their classmates when his boyfriend has effectively become a villain. May I ask why? Momo's trying to remain open-minded about this. It seems dangerous. We'll need an informant, Izuku says quickly, and Momo understands that she is getting the partial truth of the matter, with some of his reasoning concealed for someone's benefit. Besides, Izuku says, eyes low and voice lower. He's got his own reasons. And Momo accepts this at face value, because there are two things she knows. First, Todoroki must have a good reason to stay and risk continued bodily harm without Izuku to fall back on. And second, Izuku and Shoto know each other better than anyone Momo has ever seen. She nods. Shinso nods. Izuku and Todoroki both nod. Sunday night. Don't go back to campus, Izuku says, quiet and serious and still as death. 
Everyone knows what that means. Todoroki leans into Izuku, forgetting the thermos of cold soba he had brought to eat. Izuku brushes Todoroki's hair out of his face and kisses his forehead, where the scar meets the unmarred skin. Shinzo says something sarcastic, something normal about the PDA, but Momo feels her heart rend itself out of shape with grief, both her own and theirs. Today is Thursday. Three more days of peace before they march to battle, whatever that looks like. Momo opens her bento and feels a smile bloom on her face as she makes some stupid joke about where Aizawa keeps his sleeping bag when he doesn't use it. She will enjoy her peace while she has it. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 7 of Watch Your Heroes Fall. Chapter 8 will be next. Hope you all are still enjoying, and as always, thank you so much for listening.